So earlier, in another lecture, we spoke about the relationship between temperature and reaction rate. And we said that as we increase our temperature, our reaction rate also increases. Because on average, more molecules will have enough kinetic energy to overcome the activation energy. Now today we're going to look at something called catalysts. Now catalysts are organic or inorganic molecules that also, like temperature, affect our rate of reaction. Now let's look at the following hypothetical example in which reactants A plus B react to form a product AB. Now let's suppose that our reaction is reversible, meaning it goes forward and backward. And that means at equilibrium, our rate forward will be the same as the rate backwards. Now let's look at the catalyzed reaction. Suppose we add a catalyst, catalyst C, to our reactants. Now before we look at the mechanism by which it increases the rate, let's make sure we understand the fact that catalysts are not used up in reaction. In other words, if you add some catalyst to our reactants, you will get that same catalyst back at the end of your reaction. Now that catalyst might react uh, somehow with one of the reactants, maybe covalently or non-covalently, in other words, it might bind to it and help them form the products, but at the end, it will separate, and you will be able to get your C back. Um, all right, so let's look at the mechanism by which these catalysts affect our reaction rates. So in order to see this, we have to go back to our Arrhenius equation. And this equation we spoke about when we spoke about temperature and reaction rate. So K, our reaction constant, is equal to Z times P. Now Z and P are the steric factor and the frequency of collisions. Now this guy E is what our catalyst affects. Now catalysts speed up reactions <coughs> by lowering the activation energy needed to convert the reactants to products. Now this in turn increases the number of molecules that have enough kinetic energy to climb that activation barrier. In other words, it decreases this activation energy EA, thereby increasing this E component, and this in turn increases our rate constant, which is directly proportional to rate of reaction. And that's how the rates of reactions are increased by catalysts. Now let's look at this graph. It's energy on the y-axis versus time or progress of reaction on the x-axis. Now this black curve is the curve that represents before addition of catalysts. Notice the activation energy goes all the way up to this <coughs> uh, blue level. Now when you add that catalyst, what happens is that activation energy is lowered by this much to this red uh, level. And that means more molecules on average will have enough kinetic energy to climb this new activation barrier and form the products. And that's exactly what happens when you add a catalyst. Now it's very important to understand the following point. Catalysts do not, and I repeat, do not affect the equilibrium of reaction. In other words, what catalysts do is they speed up their forward reaction and reverse reaction, but the final concentrations of our products and reactants remain the same. In other words, let's look at this uncatalyzed and catalyzed reaction again. Suppose that the concentration and equilibrium of our uncatalyzed are as following. We have concentration of A, we have concentration of B, and concentration of our product AB. Now for the catalyzed reaction, even though equilibrium will be reached much quicker because of the catalyst, the final concentrations are exactly the same. They have not changed. In other words, catalysts do not touch the equilibrium of our reaction. They affect the kinetics of our reaction, but they do not affect equilibrium. Now we're going to examine the two types of catalysts. So we have heterogeneous catalysts, are molecules that are in a different state compared to the reactants. In other words, if our reactants are in a gas state or a liquid state, then our catalysts are in a solid state. Now, when we're dealing with heterogeneous catalysts, namely solid catalysts, this is what happens. Our reactants absorb momentarily or bind to the catalyst, which weakens the bonds, decreasing activation energy, which in turn increases the reaction rate. 
So let's look at the following uncatalyzed reaction. Br2 reacts with C2H4 to produce C2H2Br2. Now this by itself is a very slow occurring reaction. But if you had a catalyst, a metal catalyst, this reaction will speed up. Let's look at the following uh, illustration. So this, <coughs> this is our metal catalyst. What happens is this reactant momentarily binds to the surface of our catalyst and this weakens the double bond and then this other reactant can come from the top attacking these carbons thereby creating our uh, product. Now this is how metal catalysts act. An example of such a metal catalyst is for example fuel cells. In fuel cells platinum catalyst acts in the same manner to speed up the reactions, the oxidation and reduction reactions in an anode and a cathode. Now if you want to learn more about fuel cells check out the link above. So now let's look at homogeneous catalysts. Now homogeneous catalysts are catalysts that are in the same state as our reactant, usually liquid or gas. A great, a common, a great and common example of a homogeneous catalyst are acids. Now these guys weaken bonds by adding an H plus ion to one of the reactants thereby lowering the activation energy and speeding up our reaction. For example, let's look at the following reaction. Now this actually involves a bit of organic chemistry, but bear with me and I'll try to explain it. What happens is one of the H molecules, one of the H ions is added to this H group, uh, to this oxygen group. And this weakens this bond here. So then the hydroxide form act as a base or a nucleophile attacking this carbon bond thereby displacing this weaker bond and it was weakened by the H group remember so displacing it forming our product now we have the OH group instead of the OCH3 group and this is exactly how homogeneous catalysts act in other words they momentarily bind with our reactants help them out and then at the end after a reaction is finished they move away and you can isolate your catalyst at the end of your reaction. Now a great example of biological catalysts are enzymes. Enzymes are usually proteins found in our body that speed up the rates of reactions or slow down the rates of reactions.